Yep. Hey everyone, yep. Beastman coming at ya. Hassan here. And super excited for today. This is going to be a slightly different than what we normally do, which is more of a kind of walkthrough of what we've built and kind of Q&A sort of style. And then at the end of this stream, we're going to get Stone Fox in and we're going to talk VR. So if you have any questions for him or about VR in general or anything that you want us to discuss, I think that'll be so much fun. Can't wait to have him in about 30 minutes. And uh, yeah, like I said, this is a pretty different stream than usual. We have a GitHub repo in the description, so go ahead and check that out. That's whatever project you're seeing right now, which, I mean, it's kind of shaky because I have the vibe <laughs> here. But you can see the, uh, the ice picks there, and really all we have to do is go ahead and climb this. So I'm going to jump right in. And the tracking space here is a little wonky. Yeah, so, so ice climber today. You can see these guys. Picking oh, up God. the ice. The idea behind this is basically you pick up the ice, these ice picks and you hit those ice cubes to start climbing. And you have to hit with a certain velocity. If you hit like really like a light tap, you're not going to be able to got the control. Let's see, the tracking here is really Yeah, we're bad. having some tracking troubles. There we go. <laughs> Looks like you got them. So you can see here, got the, the ice picks here. And you just go ahead and hit. Got to hit a little stronger. Come on. There we go. Yeah, it looks like the problem was actually that I was blocking one of the <laughs> trackers. So I'll move to the other side. <laughs> also, if you're following us on social, on Facebook, we we're go. trying to figure out who can come up with the best vanilla ice joke oh, uh, <laughs> for this ice climber. But yeah. also post one in the chat, too. One of those things, one of the things that's not in here is that if you, <laughs> if you throw the ice pick, and I left it in here because it's kind of fun. If you throw the ice pick and you're not actually holding on it, it actually tries to pull you. So <laughs> one of the things that might happen is you throw the ice pick and then it pulls you down below the ground. And I don't, I don't have any like checks for like falling below the ground. So then you start falling. Yeah. <laughs> just, just really fun. So it's but, an ice climber and the projectile. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> I would be super cool if it was like a boomerang. You just throw it. Hits and then comes back that to you. That would be pretty cool. <laughs> pretty wild. Probably another live stream. <laughs> on that. Yeah, so idea here, I'm just going to walk through kind of five to ten minutes of how this was designed, how it's set up, kind of the code process. Again, you have all of this on GitHub right now, so you can go ahead and download that for yourself. And then I'll t basically open the chat up and kind of we'll just talk about whatever you guys want to build um, for about like 20 or so minutes, and then we'll get Stonefox on. So totally, and I'll be in the chat. So if there are any questions or if you have uh, oh the other thing, you other see, way. let us there's, know. There's uh, the chat right here. Decided to get that <laughs> working today. So yeah. if you want to get a shout out to anyone or do anything like that, you have the chat to do that. So with that, let's dive let's, in. Let's dive in. So whoop. go here. There we go. All right. So well, this is kind of a just the game view is kind of lousy, but. What we have here is basically a block of, of cubes. You can make however many you want, and you can see here they're just a bunch of cubes on the in the scene view. And the the reason that they're kind of transparent like that is I actually went ahead and got these prototype material pack on the asset store. You can get that for yourself. I made a link in the GitHub as well. And as part of that, you get this uh, kind of glass texture. I ended up taking that and then making it a little blue to kind of give it that ice cube effect. So you can see here, Really, the only thing that changed was adding in the uh, the blue kind of tint to the glass. And, it, I mean, it looks pretty good for uh, glass. Um, if you kind of zoom in here, you can see that there's a little bit of texture into the shadow, and that's just kind of the light kind of protruding through the, the glass. And, I mean, for, for a hacked piece of ice, I think it's really cool. The other thing is uh, I got these ice picks. Um, you can see here, they're also free on the asset store. They'll be on link in the GitHub as well. And really, all I did here was, I mean, they're, they're just grabbable objects. For this, I'm using the Steam VR interaction system. If we want, we can uh, dive into like getting VRTK into this, which, I mean, it's applicable since we're having Stone Fox on. And um, yeah, I mean, really, all I needed to do here was kind of make it a throwable object, attach the ice, uh, ice axe to it, and... The, the one key here is normally when you use SteamVR interaction system, uh, the attach ease in is actually off by default. You're going to want to actually go ahead and put that on your, your axes so that they like, kind of map straight onto your hand. The other thing to note here is you have the, I mean, there are other offsets here to kind of align the axe to your hand. But the key thing that really makes it feel a lot better 
is actually making the axe offset by 45 uh, degrees there. So by doing that, I'm going to zoom into the axes wherever they are. There they are, kind of hidden by all these gizmos. Let me go ahead and turn that off. Swoop. There we go. So by mi minimizing them so that you can actually see the ice axe, and uh, the the reason that you put them off at 45 degrees is just kind of because of the resting hand position. Uh, you when you hold those controllers, they're usually off like offset by about 30 to 45 degrees. By so by rotating the axe by that much, you're basically able to uh, you're reversing the offset of the controllers basically to make it feel a lot more natural than it usually does. These are just like minor design things that you got to keep in mind as you're kind of building out your own experiences. And so that's the throwable axe. I mean, really simple there to, to kind of get working. The other thing that we put on here, and I'll actually open the script, is this pull script. So everything in here was actually based off of our climbing tutorial that we did months ago. <laughs> um, maybe almost a year ago, and that's kind of crazy to say. Um, but yeah, it, it was based on that, and I'll actually go ahead and pull that up for you guys. Oh, it's on this. Go to YouTube VR climbing tutorial. In theory, that should pop up. There it is. Um, so on here, um, you can follow along with this. Actually, Andrew Naka, so huge shout, to, shout out to him. He actually uh, has gone ahead and put those scripts uh, for anyone to use, which is really cool. He's also tweaked a few things. And he's also actually made an ice climbing experience. So you can go check out his channel. I think it's on 360 Nakas, or maybe it's on his, his own personal channel. One of those two. If he's in the chat, he can point you in the right direction. But uh, yeah, he's made that his own with VRTK. It's really cool. Um, definitely go check that out. And uh, yeah, if you go here, there's a link to basically those scripts. I mean, obviously, you have... Uh, you have our own copies in the GitHub, but if you want kind of to see how the climbing was done, definitely go go here. It's a pinned comment, so you can check that out. And uh, yeah, so it's based on that. So if we open up these scripts, so really it's only two scripts: one to manage the climbing, and then one to, to actually kind of detect on each hand when you actually go hit those uh, those points. So if we uh, get Visual Studios to open anytime soon, who knows? Give that a second, and. Loading the project. There we go. So it's this script. And while we're here, I might as well open up the other script as well. Just these two guys. And here we go. So this is the pull script. We have a few specific uh, parameters that we want to keep track of. So first is where we're tracking the object. And this is specifically that pivot point that you want to have happen. So in, in the scene view, what that is is on this ice pick, we actually went ahead and we have what we call the tip, which is basically just a sphere collider on the top of the, the point of the axe, which is really where when you go through and hit the cube, that's your actual rotation point of the, 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 ice, the ice axe. So instead of actually rotating at your hand, it'll go ahead and rotate at the tip of the ice axe, which is just convenient for actually like going through and hitting those objects. And we also have a little snow particle effect because you want to add like small things. And this is one of those things where kind of the reason why we're doing this um, as more of a talking through as opposed to actually building it is this, this particle system is probably something we would not have built. Um, but I think it's still super valuable to have as part of the whole experience. So you have this particle system. I'm actually going to turn on emission just so that we see it. And you can see here, it just all it does is it just shoots out um, these kind of quote unquote snow, ice, whatever you want to call it. It shoots those out right when you hit. And the, that I think just adds just that, a little extra feeling of like, oh, I hit this thing so I can, I can actually start climbing. Keep that in mind because, I mean, particles, particles are really what's going to make the difference between what's kind of a, a mediocre experience if you don't have it, and a really good experience because you have these animated objects flying around that makes your whole experience feel a lot more real. And that's one of the things about the real world is that generally when you look around, especially when you're outdoors, something is moving. And so when you have small things moving around, it just makes things feel a whole lot more immersive. 
So that's one of the reasons we have that there for that little haptic feed, or not haptic, but uh, feedback for when you hit it. We actually don't have haptics in here yet, but if that's something that people want to see, uh, post that in the chat. And uh, Hassan, just let me know if that if that comes up. So that's uh, that's the particle system and why we have that here. Uh, the other things that we're keeping track of is the previous position to kind of keep track of velocity and whether or not the axe is actually hitting the ice cubes and climbing them. So we keep track of that with the start method, we keep track of the delta. Um, we're using late update here because we want to actually do this after everything um, has been moved around in our current scene. So that's the reason we use late update. And then we have an on trigger enter and we have an on trigger exit to make sure that we know when the ice pick actually goes through and hits something that we want to climb. And to detect if it's something we want to climb, we have the climbable tag here. So that's um, that's just kind of the small, it's a small script really, I mean, what, 50 lines here. Uh, we attach this to both the left and right hand. You can see that here. We have that on the left hand and on the right hand. So uh, that's something to keep in mind. And then the grip manager. So the grip manager keeps track of those pulled objects. And then you have a rigid body to actually keep track of whether or not to apply gravity to your, your actual player. And really, you only want to apply gravity when, um, when you're not climbing and you want to remove gravity when you are climbing. So uh, that just kind of simulates that, that kind of real world feeling of like you actually are holding on to that ice, ice pick. So this is all code that we, we built pretty much in the climbing tutorial. So it's really cool to kind of reuse some of that uh, ideology and get that into um, a different experience. But it, and, and still feels pretty different, but the code base is actually is fairly, fairly similar. And that's really cool to, to kind of see. So you can, uh, I'm not going to dive too much into it. It's kind of commented out just so that you know what each part is doing. But again, if you want, go ahead and check that out on the GitHub. And um, yeah, I mean, we added some uh, other particle effects in here. You can see that we have a, a little hail, just again, to add to that immersion that you're in the snow scene. We have a nice skybox that I found on the asset store. Um, got the plane and uh, then the Steam VR interaction system. And here is where I've gone ahead and put the grip manager. So super fast rundown of what's in this uh, project. And again, let us know in the comments if you're watching this after the fact or in the chat if there's a, if you like this type of format where we can just kind of give you a quick rundown of the project, maybe build a different parts on top of this. Um, and then you have access to the project as well. Um, this is just something we're experimenting with. So we would love your feedback to see if this is something you want to see more of. Uh, you want us to go back to the original version of how we did the how to's. Um, all feedback, wel welcome, positive, negative, you name it. And uh, yeah, that's, um, that's just a quick one round of the project. So there are a couple things that we could build on top of this is one, uh, the haptics. I think that's a really easy thing to add. So we might, might as well do that. And then uh, two, if we have time, um, we'll probably have like 15 minutes. So go ahead and add maybe climbing if you don't actually have the ice, uh, ice axes in your hand. And for that, might as well just use VRTK because it has a nice climbing in there. So with that, I'm just going to go ahead and add the haptics really fast. Public hand, um, hand. So let's go ahead, grab the hand here. And with the hand, let's just go ahead here and just test real fast that this has on a, basically we want to see if it has a haptic component to it, which I don't see straight off the bat. I know in VRTK specifically that there is one, but I don't see it here, which is kind of bizarre. I mean, because I would have imagined, oh, there it is. So you have to do hand controller trigger haptic pulse. And when you do that, what will end up happening is you, I think you have a few parameters here. Actually, you know what? I'm just actually going to do it with the default parameters. Um, just to make sure I'm using this correctly because that <laughs> that could be part of the problem. I just want to make sure that when we um, go ahead and collide with the climbable or actually any object, that we are triggering a, a pulse. Um, it's not going to last for the whole duration, but it'll last for some of the duration. Um, and then the only thing we have to do in here is 
go through and just wait for it to update. We should get the hand. Um, the hand. So the hands are actually located in the SteamVR interaction system. So you can see those are right here. Um, and in fact, maybe instead of grabbing the hand, because one of the problems here is with those axes, you can actually grab either one. Like, so I could grab an axe for the left or right hand. So basically what we want there instead, instead of, we, we can do it with a hand, but one thing we might want to do instead is actually do it with uh, the, actually the interaction system. So, touch to hand delegate. So on the interactable, you can see that Oh, we do get, we actually do get the events for unattached hands. So maybe let's just use that. That's actually super easy. So what I'm going to go ahead here and do is, um, we're going to keep track of the interactable script. And then on this, what we're going to do here is on start, we're basically going to assign ourselves to the unattached, um, yeah, the unattached to hand delegate, and then the on unattached, basically. And with that, basically, we can keep track of which hand is actually holding our um, is actually holding the the ice, uh, the ice axe. So let's go ahead here, and we'll say uh, let's not call let's just call this the interactable, just so that we have good naming convention. Um, here, go ahead, interactable on hand attached plus equals, and we'll just have it auto create our uh, our method here. So you can see here we get the hand, super convenient. Let's create a private variable to actually detect, uh, to save our hand. Let's call that that. So here this hand, um, this dot hand equals hand. And we don't need this anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and leave a comment here. Um, so uses the hand we saved and add haptic feedback to it when we climb. I'll go ahead and push this to GitHub as well. That's the beauty of GitHub. It's like I can make some small changes here and then that just gets applied really easily to, uh, to the actual repo. Um, yeah, with that, I mean, now it uh, doesn't matter which hand we actually grab the controller with. We now just have access to it and can really easily just go ahead and if I grab it with the left, it'll start pulsing on the left, grab it with the right, start pulsing with the right. And uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and just the only th other thing we need to do is on this pull script, we now need to add our interactable script to it. So just do the same one here. And on the other one, let's go ahead and drag that interactable down. Go ahead and hit save. And let's give that a shot for making sure that the haptics actually work. And where's Unity? There we go. Alrighty. Make sure these controllers stay on and you guys can see that. Come on. Controller. There we go. Yep, so I get it on that. I now get it on that. And let's just go ahead. I don't know why I switch really easily. That's the, that's a question. I'm just going to drop these down. And now, because the hand switches, we now uh, get the haptics on the right one. So, really nice way to actually go ahead and give yourself haptic feedback. I'm just going to toss that in the air because <laughs> we can. And, yeah. Um, we have haptic feedback. I'll go ahead and add this to GitHub after the stream. Um, but, I mean, you can see it's it's not really hard to add some certain features into what you want, especially when you're using SDKs, um, both with VRTK and SteamVR Interaction System. Um, it's just surprisingly easy. And I had to have... Uh, this has been Fuse Man. And Hassan. And the <laughs> <laughs> And Abdo. And we're signing out.